Okay, so this right here is your basic standard 199740 car line. It's got like 206,000 miles on it. And recently developed this problem where the rear brake lights, well the bottom two aren't working. But the top two brake lights work fine. So, I did a lot of research online, I checked on YouTube, there were no videos online on how to fix it. So I'm just going to show you right now how to troubleshoot it. Well, the number one culprit for a brake light error would be right here. That switch right back there. Uh, that's called the brake light switch. Now that switch, if, if all three of my brake lights weren't working, that would be my culprit. But as my third brake light's working fine, I know that's not the problem. Now my second culprit would be a fuse. That would be that little red panel over there. Uh, on most cars, the third brake light and the second brake light, the, it has two separate circuits with two separate fuses. Now, because my problem is intermittent, meaning that uh, sometimes my third brake light will come on and work fine and the bottom ones will be on too and everything will be fine, the other times it will be just my third brake light and my bottom two won't be working. So that, to me, eliminates the fuse. So, because of that, my only other conclusion would be this guy right here. Well, this guy's, there's more inside right here. But, like, that, this is a general switch. Now, it's all just one giant switch that controls everything. The main reason why I feel that this is the, the culprit is because Ford vans have, well, Ford, Chevy, any vehicle that has a turn signal that's integrated with say your brake light switch or the same circuit now that circuit it, that what that means is that the turn signal will be using the same lamp that will be your brake light so in, instead of having its own separate bulb this van has the, the brake light that is the double UD as a turn signal now inside this switch there's an interrupter that interrupter cancels the brake signal going to the turn signal lamp that's on now if you weren't if you if this van didn't have the interrupter it wouldn't flash it would just be one constant shade of red. So basically if this switch is faulty that means it'll be the interrupter will be triggering when it shouldn't be triggering which is what I feel is happening now. So I'm just going to pull this guy off. Oh, I already took off all the screws and everything just to make this a little bit quicker. I'm going to pull that off. Well, and then pull this one off here as well. Yeah. Oh, never mind. My problem is not a faulty switch, it is just a broken thing right there. Never mind. That should fix the problem. That right there, that, that switch is faulty. That's my issue. Well, if by chance you don't have a broken clip and your problem is not that simple, uh, to pull this guy out is just one torque screw right here and another torque screw on the bottom. Just take those two out and it'll all come back out. I'm just going to put this back together now. I'm just going to show you how to put this all back together real quick. So yeah, just take this guy right here. Yep. And just put that on right around this way. Stick it back in there. Oh, there we go. Oh. Take this one. Put this one right in. Yep, right in there. Alright, first gotta take this guy back off. Remember, I use that to tilt the steering wheel forward. Actually, no, I might not have put that in the video. I probably won't put that in the video, to be honest. Clamshell these guys back together. There we go. Put that back. That's back on. And then put the three screws in, which I will do right after I stick this guy in right here. That's in, and that's in. And now I'll just put the screws in. I'm sure you guys know how to do that, so you don't need me. So. <laughs> 